driving because there's a bunch of cars going by. Are you driving while you're holding those pretzels? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I put Just down a little? the pretzels, but I'm still driving. But oh. I'm driving very slowly. Okay. And if and if things pick up, I will. We'll pull over. Okay. Well, we'll, right. well, you just leave if you need to, but we're going to, we're going to start rolling. Hello, everybody. Yes, and if like, just don't look at us, like just look ahead <laughs> yeah, and look ahead. we'll know you're paying attention though. Pretend we're not here. We're just, we're just sitting next to you <laughs> right. in the back seat of the car. You yeah. don't need to look at us. You go but, back yes. to your pre empty nest. Everyone, and pretend shut, we're up. Just... <laughs> shut up back there. <laughs> oh my gosh. And for anybody just joining in, welcome to the mom and dot 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 podcast tipsy ellipses edition, which is once a month we record one of our episodes live on Facebook Live. And sometimes there is something to be tipsy about. And Missy, you look like you're just having a water. I am only I'm just have my little Chardonnay here because I'm a 50 year old woman. And I'm mostly having water, but I did. We had some open wine, so I do have a little a wine little, here too. A sploosh, a sploosh. But yeah, so I am Suzanne Kearns. I am a mom and dot 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 writer, LGBTQ advocate, and tonight, like I said, I am partaking in some early evening Chardonnay because we are recording this at six. Don't they usually say at six o'clock somewhere, or is it five o'clock somewhere? It's five o'clock somewhere. Oh, and well, it is. then I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, you're Cause great because it, it is six o'clock here. It is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm Missy Stevens, mom and dot, 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 writer, foster care advocate, and tonight irrationally angry at the National Weather Service because it's almost 100 and it's April 5th. <laughs> I have a lot of anger. I am also almost 50 and menopausal and I'm hot. So not happy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and tonight we are really excited that we made this happen and really Sarah made it happen. Our guest is Sarah Mazes, who better not be tipsy because she's in the car. If you are watching us I'm live, not water, water, <laughs> she's got her water, water and pretzels is what she is on. And um, she is currently driving to LAX to pick up her college roommate for a visit. And she is, Sarah is a mom and dot, 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 award-winning producer, creative and production executive, content creator, social media expert comedy and kids book writer and a literary agent oh Welcome. wait i gotta i gotta pull out this book here because i know Sarah can... it's so cute catechist catechist look how cute this is it's so cute yeah we'll have to do a live reading while you're driving all right can you hear us i can't you know what i realized when my alarm goes off um any notifications hijack my audio uh, okay well if any alarms go off we'll just have you boot back in we're fine yeah yeah. Right. Or call 911. <laughs> or call, <Right>. yeah. <laughs> right. We'll assess how you look before we decide what we're going to do. Thank she you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my gosh, Sarah. So, okay, we're going to try to keep our conversation. No trick questions. No gotchas. Just something that you can easily chat about while you're driving. <laughs> Don't no, have to feel free. Challenge me. Challenge me. Go for it. Oh. I'm going to pull over as soon as I can get past this traffic. And then I, and then I'm. it'll be Awesome. Good. Good. Well, so our podcast is typically, typically we interview career coaches, life coaches, all kinds of people who can help answer big questions for moms about what should they be doing with their lives? Like I, if they feel lost in their identity of being a mom, whatever the case may be. But then, like I said, for tipsy ellipses, once a month, we like to talk to some moms who are doing amazing things and we call it quote unquote making the most of their ellipses all mm -hmm. the things after mom and dot 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 and I when I think of a mom making the most of their ellipses I mean you are yeah. top three top three <laughs> as far as now I need to know who your other two are I know no <laughs> it's just like doing the most interesting things the last time I was in LA and hanging out with you was when you were at the Jim Henson Company, um, and you were the vice president of, what was your official title besides tour guide of cool puppets? <laughs> um, I was vice president of television, and I remember that you guys came for Mom 2.0, and it was mm -hmm. so fun. Yes. It was so fun. I was so happy to have you guys. And we're going to be back there in a couple more weeks. Yeah. Yeah, like three I weeks, know. two weeks. I know. Yeah. Oh my god. That is that is where that is where we get to meet up and we actually I can get tipsy then. There you <laughs> there go. You go. <laughs> but yeah. now you are no longer the Jim Henson company and I believe you I, even have a newer, fresher thing coming. So tell us about what you're doing now and what you're doing next. Oh my gosh. So well I I left Henson because as I mean it 
my contract was up, number one. But, you know, I, I think the same thing. I, I don't think there's a single person out there. I know this for you guys, too. Like, we talk about this all the time on Facebook. Like, these past couple of years have been crazy. Crazy. And um, really hard on my family and really hard on everyone's family. But mm -hmm. um, for us, what we had to go through was my husband lost both of his parents to COVID two days apart. Um, oh. My mom lost her husband of three years, and mm. one of my kids was going through, well, all three of my kids were going through a lot. I think that this was hard on everyone, but I think there's two groups of people this was hardest on. And it was hard on everyone, but I would say older teens and kids mm -hmm. going into college, because every bone in their body, every, their DNA is literally physically forcing them to run away from us as fast as they can and to find their independence, yes. and they can't. Yeah. And then the other group is parents of young children. I think that those two groups got the short stick of it. Like, I was fine staying home. I'm like, what? I, could, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, it was horrible. I mean, you know, it's a horrible thing. But I just, there, I know so many teenagers dealing with depression. Yep. And if you guys ever want to just, sit and talk about what our teenagers have gone through oh my god so when I left Henson I took a few months to just be home we were dealing with the college admissions process which oh, wow. Jesus freaking for twins for twins <laughs> oh, um, <Sarah. laughs> and it was it was just it was too it was all too much I was like I just too much. need to focus and then I started my own production company because I can't sit still for very long called Cheeky Squirrel Productions. And, I love uh, that name. Thank you. Thank you. It was so funny. My whole life I always thought I would have a different name if I ever had a production company. And then I was faced with filling out my LLC paperwork, and I was like, hmm, Cheeky <laughs> Squirrel. And I was like, that's it. And it was so funny because I never, never in a million years thought, but, you know, I was like, that just feels right. It just um, was inspired in the moment. It was just in the moment, and I was working on two projects that I brought on, and I sold both of them, and that was super exciting. So I was like, oh, I'll be EPing these things, and of course, that's when I get a call about another job, and I, I went to work briefly for Hershend Studios, which is for any people who live in what's called sort of the new heartland. They are the largest entertainment company you've never heard of, they own the Globetrotters and Dollywood and theme parks all over the place. Yeah, and, we just saw the Globetrotters um, this weekend. Did you? I just saw them yeah. a couple of weeks ago. They're yeah. amazing. Oh, oh my God. Can we, we were in love with the flight time and big or flight time and big easy. Big from, easy. Do you remember when they were the on Amazing Race? Amazing Race? Oh, yeah. they were our favorite. Oh, big Easy, by the way, just left. Yes. Oh, yeah, but they were great. Sure. They were so good. As a child, yeah. I was obsessed. And so I was so I excited obsessed. to take my kids obsessed and so they're doing a big rebranding over there and all this yeah. stuff but I have to say I met a ton of the team members and they're like the greatest freaking guys on the planet I was in love with them and so I was getting ready to settle in there and I, I'm not allowed to say where I'm going but I got a call for my dream job oh. the thing I've been working towards my entire freaking life oh my god you can't tell us I can't say <laughs> We're just gonna have to wait. It's okay. We'll it's wait. okay because we're gonna we're gonna see you soon, and we'll set Okay, up and I'll tell you then. But it is, it's the biggest job I've ever had. I am. It is such a wonderful, wonderful challenge, and it's so. It's almost like kind of. It's kind of fun to talk about this with you guys because your focus is on like the ellipses, and being over fifty. And I will not say how over fifty because another conversation to be had is the work world and women over 50 and how yes. hard it is uh, to find a job. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. so I'm not hiding it because I'm ashamed of it. I'm hiding of it because I do believe discrimination is real. Mm -hmm. And I just, if I don't need to say it, I prefer not to. <laughs> yeah. But that being said, it's an opportunity to be, I can't think of another word other than facile. And I'm not trying to be like, some sort of, you know, oh, I'm using it. I just, <laughs> it's all different kinds of media and it's kids content and it gives me so much freedom and leeway and I'm working with the most incredible team and I, I just, I'm like, I, I'm pinching myself. 
I literally have black and blue marks on my arm. <laughs> oh my god! I've been so how new myself. is this? Well, I, it's been going on. The conversations have been going on in an interview process for months. I mean, it's it's amazing what. It, oh no! Oh, did we lose her? Maybe. Can you hear me? Oh, there yeah, you now are. Now we can. You're a little uh, frozen, but we can hear you. My phone is like the most annoying assistant on the planet. <laughs> um, but I apologize for that. Anyway, oh, so it is, it's an opportunity to, for me, one of the things, because I do talk with a lot of friends, and I've always wanted to do something in the space of, like, helping women. Like, you guys talk about your passions for LGBTQ and foster care. Honestly, mine is helping women get into the second act. And yes. I, I mean, I think that it is so hard, and I can't believe I managed to do it after my divorce and being home with my kids, and it's hard. It's really hard, but I'm really passionate about it, and I know that it's, you know, its own thing, but anyway, my point is, think... it's, it's an opportunity to learn more about areas that make me so much more relevant moving forward, and yeah. I'll be working in everything from gaming to interactive, to AI, and television, and content. I mean, it's, it is the most incredible opportunity, and I'm, oh. I just feel really, really lucky to be doing it and to be learning new stuff. Like, I have that thing inside of me where I'm super excited about doing something new. You know, you're scared, yeah. and you're like, oh, I took on too much. Too big a bite, too big a bite, too big a bite. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know that feeling. It's that feeling you're like, oh, this is over there. Abort, abort. And, yeah. um, but I'm really feeling like that's that's where I think the magic happens. I think when you push yourself. Yep. So I was about to say, when that feeling comes, there's usually there's a reason that it's there and nagging at you like yeah. that. Oh, I'm so it, happy for you. Thank you, thank you. I'm I'm. Ah! Yeah, because so you were so, you were so discreet about just online about like. And I will be pursuing another opportunity. I was like, what does that mean? Um, (laughs) That could either be really exciting or really bad. I don't know which way is it. So it's so exciting. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we can't wait to watch it unfold. Yes. Well, I'll tell you all about it at Mom 2.0. Yay. So exciting. And it'll be all over social media next Monday. So next Monday. Unless, oh, unless right. something horrible or act of God happens, God forbid, not going to <laughs> I know, I'm knocking. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You get, because you get pulled over on the freeway. Because everything's nothing until it's something. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'll be like, but, but officer, I'm, I'm on a podcast right now. <laughs> I'm promoting my new gig. Say hi know. to the audience. Wave. <laughs> Okay. Give well, okay. Ticket live. Now, speaking of other random things that were all across the internet, I know. Okay. We just got to share your connection to this story of the Oscar slap felt across the world. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, I can't do it justice. Can you share a little bit about why that was an extra stressful moment for you? Oh my God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I might need to pull over for this one. Oh, wow. um, I can only retell what I personally experienced. I can tell you that. Um, yes. and, and I can't give any behind the scenes or anything like that. But No, but just brother, from yours. My brother-in-law was nominated for an Oscar for Best Documentary. And it's the movie is called Summer of Soul. And it was directed by Questlove. And mm-hmm. my brother-in-law, David Dinnerstein, he executive produced it. He has been working on this project for six years. He found the footage. He brought Questlove into the project. Like, it, this has been his baby. And for six years, we've been watching him and his company just, like, busting their butts. And when they got nominated, we're all freaking out. We're like, oh, my God, this is so exciting. And it's it's not his first nomination, which sounds really kind of, like, bougie of me. I'm like, he's been nominated <laughs> before. But we knew this time we're like, we think he's got to, you know, it's he's really going to win. win. And, and yeah. you know, he's so talented. And we're like, he's, he's, we think he's going to win. So the family got together. We have a lot of family here in Los Angeles. And so I got together with my cousins and their kids. And my twins were home from college. And my daughter was 
Zoomed it. Actually, my son was Zoomed it too because he was sick and we're like, oh, you're covid He wasn't covid but we're like, you need to stay It's home. always COVID. And so, no. yeah. yeah, so he's like, he's watching from home and we're watching on the cell phone. We ordered in pizza and, you know, everyone's like, okay. And I've got the phone set. Literally, I have the phone set up filming all of us so that we can get a reaction, so I can send it to my sister and my brother-in-law and my niece. Um, and we, it's like everything's set up. You know that things like when someone you know is on television and you're like, everyone, just shut up. Like, just shut up. Like, everyone's quiet. Like, you're like, you're like, your phone's on mute. You, and you're like, this is like a very big moment. Yes. yes. And Chris Rock comes on. And I knew that Chris Rock would be their presenter because – he was at the party the day before, and I'm like, he oh. must be the presenter. That he wouldn't have been at the party. Yeah. So I'm like, oh my god, this is it! And we're all like freaking out, so exciting. And then the TV, and he's talking like blah blah blah, GI Jane too. And we're like, ah, and silence. The TV got. We're like, what happened to the TV? What happened to the TV? I was like freaking out, like God, fix the TV. And like my my cousin <laughs> husband, and he's like pressing buttons. He's like, I'm trying. My son calls on his phone. He's like, what the just happened? <laughs> And you know that moment you're waiting, you're like, we can't, the TV's going in and out. And we then the, then the card comes up, like, Oscars 2022. <laughs> what? You know, this is his moment? His yes. moment. His mo- I'm like, goosebumps. So this is his freaking moment. And the TV's going out, and we're freaking out thinking something happened to the reception. Yeah, like right. the network's down would, on the feed yes. down or whatever. Like, are we just the unluckiest people? Like, what the hell is happening? And we cut to, cut to the TV coming back on and Will Smith mouthing what we all know was what we all know. Yeah. Like, been, and we were like, what just happened? Yeah. Um, and I, and we were just like, sitting there. And the whole thing, by the way, is on my phone because we had taped, we wanted to tape our reaction. Your moment. Oh uh-huh. my God. So you see all of us sitting there on the set. We're all like, what? What? You, what? <laughs> wait, what? And we're thinking, oh my God, like Chris Rock is going to leave. And, you know, or Will Smith's going to get something. Something's going down and they're yeah. not going to get their award. And this is it. Like they're not, they're like cutting down the, and I was just thinking his whole moment is ruined. Ruined. And and then Chris Rock, God bless him. I I you know I like him, but I really love him now. I was like, he just handled it. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Speaking of technical difficulty, our Oscars just got interrupted. Our we Oscars can't just, hear you. Someone just slapped Sarah on the freeway. <laughs> oh, dang it! <laughs> She has a lot of reminders in her life. That's she an alarm. Again. She must set alarms like I do. Can you hear me? Sorry. I'm, yeah, close we can. Enough, I'm close enough to the airport now that I can pull over. So <laughs> I'm pulling over outside a liquor store near the airport. Best oh, thing to just in time for tipsy ellipses. Right. Just in time. Well, at least I know I'm close enough to be able to like pick my friend up on time, which is really the yeah. only thing I want. I don't like to be late. So no. Okay. <laughs> so where was I? You were so talking about class. Chris Rock pulling it back yeah. together. And I just was like, he pulled it together. And you could just, he looked like he was about to cry. Yes. And he pulled it together, but it was like the room was never the same after that. And it just it was like, mm-hmm. what the heck? What, what did your heck? sister and brother-in-law think was going on? Because I've seen a lot of commentary that people thought it was a bit like a sketch. And I, um, at, at first everyone thought it was a sketch, but that's, that's mm-hmm. all I can say about yeah. it yeah 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 oh my gosh well i mean i that's very interesting that you were recording yourself at the time to get the reaction because i'm sure that reaction was even more interesting than you had expected <laughs> don't get rid of that recording it's a little piece of oscar's history for sure it is <laughs> it was crazy it was it was nuts and you know anyway i know oh my that's gosh. What we're, but yeah it was it was for me and my family we're like on the one hand, it's like the wor- one of the worst things to happen when you win an Oscar, but also kind of awesome because forever it will be known as the, you know, Summer of Soul got really 
grow buds. So. <laughs> oh my god! No, it will. I mean, yeah, so it's so amazing. Awesome. It's amazing so. for people who haven't watched it. It's so cool that you're you have a connection with that. Oh, he's so talented. They're such a talented group of people. And yeah. um, anyway, they were thrilled. I got to tell you, they all got up there, and everyone was just, you know, they're thrilled. I know yeah. he was. I can't speak for anyone else, but you know, you keep going. Yes. Yeah. Well, now he's not the only award winner in your family. You've had all kinds of programming and stuff that's won awards. And like, so let's, let's dive in a little deeper to like your career path. Like where, where did you start originally? Um, I was born in Philadelphia. (laughs) I, uh, my first job out of school was as an assistant literary agent. And I worked for the literary agent who represented anyone and everyone who was in children's publishing. He worked with Mm. Maury Sendak and Stephen Kellogg and Rosemary Wells and James Marshall. And like, I mean, it was, it was crazy. How did you land that right out of school? You know what? I, it wasn't easy. I assure you because it was not a job I even knew existed. Mm. And I had, I mean, I had no idea that this, was even a career path. I didn't even know what a literary agent did. It was one of those things I was working with a um, a headhunter. And I had always felt that I would go to work at either an art gallery or I I was up for a job at Vogue as an assistant. And I was like, oh my God, that would be amazing. And I didn't get it. And, you know, it just was one of those things. I I kind of, I, I tried something I'd never even knew existed. And I was there for a year and a half when I moved over to William Morris. And from there I built, I was an assistant for a couple of years and then I made a proposal. I wrote a proposal to build the children's entertainment division. And so I started taking on children's book authors and connecting with our LA counterparts to do books to film. This was just at a time where Kids Entertainment was kind of coming into its own. This was a long time ago. The Little Mermaid, Disney's yeah. first movie. Like, you know, it was it was just a very big moment mm-hmm. for children's yeah. entertainment. And so, and I worked with a bunch of talented writers there. And I I worked on Captain Underpants, and I worked mm-hmm. with Cynthia Ryland, and uh, I got to work with Judy Bloom on something. Oh, uh, I worked I worked on Bill Cosby's Little Bill. That was really that was actually really fun. And uh, it was from, I was at William Morris for a few years, but I really, I didn't want to be in television. I didn't want, I did want to be in publishing and not from that side, at least. I didn't yeah. want to be an agent. I just yeah. I realized they didn't love agenting. So I had an opportunity. I was offered a job out in Los Angeles to go and be VP of development for an animation studio. Mm. And it was a really, it was just one of those things, but much like I'm feeling now where it was like, oh my God, you know, this is a big shift for me. I can feel it. This is a sea change. And I yeah. took the job and I came out to California and I was in children's television for a while um, before I segued into comedy because that happened. Uh, <laughs> does that feel yeah. like another lifetime? Yeah. It, it does. really does. It yeah. really does. I mean, it's, it, I had to be home with my kids. My oldest daughter was diagnosed with, Asperger's when she was three years old and the twins had just been born and you know sometimes your life just takes things bleed into each other there's no mm-hmm. balance it's just where the line of the bleeding goes oh my gosh and isn't that right it, yeah yeah I and mean, you can't there's no balance it's just it's shifting it's mm-hmm. but something's always losing and I had to give up my career and really work on early intervention with her. And she's great. I mean, she was, she's very high functioning and she's a great person. It doesn't, you know, it's not even something that even like on the radar other than like, there is an awesomely quirky, wonderful person and she's grown up to be extraordinary and so self-sufficient. And I, every day just amazes me with, she's way got her act together way more than I ever did. (laughs) I and, love that. Well, know, and thank goodness for early intervention too, because right? like you said, taking that time, I'm sure that was really hard for you. But the success that she's able to have in her life now, I think, probably is to great measure the work and effort that you put in at that early age. Yeah. I guess I'll never know, 
But yeah. I'm okay with thinking that it is. Well, yeah, sure. Take it credit. didn't hurt. I clearly it didn't, didn't hurt. hurt. Yeah. It, it didn't, didn't hurt, hurt, but I will say early early intervention is everything. It's yeah. everything. And and um it I, was lucky I was able to do it. But it's hard to get back in the work world, you know. Oh yeah. That's what yeah. the whole dang podcast is about. How well, how yeah. long was your break? It was I got I just said break. That is not a break. It's not a break. Not how long was your pause? pause? Yeah. How yeah. long was your pause? You know, my pause probably lasted about 10 years, but mm. during that time, I did other things. So I yeah. just, I wasn't in the workforce the same way. And yeah. Suzanne, that's how you and I know each other. Yes. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll fill in the blanks for her. Hold on. <laughs> oh, well, no, yeah, I forgot to, us. no, I forgot to thank Sarah earlier. The way that I met Sarah, actually, is she used to be in charge of, uh, for her parents, not parents. It was like the funny <laughs> today parents. Today yeah, parents. Today parents. Yeah. Um, uh, they're funniest parents on Facebook. And so Sarah yeah, was I'm going charge. right now. Hello. I'm, I'm going into my your... notifications and silencing everything. I'm just <laughs> silencing just... everything. Well, you do that. I was just talking about how I first met you through your stuff at Today Parents and doing the funniest parents on Facebook. And so I wanted to, yeah, hats off. Sarah probably got me at least a few thousand of my Facebook followers. Yeah, and uh, some of those people are in our group now. So we are so thankful I know, for that. I know. Well, you know, the funniest thing, it was called the funniest parents on Facebook. But I think all of the ones that got selected were things that my son said. And he's like, well, he it should be the, the funniest, funniest kids. kids on Facebook. Yeah, he is a funny, funny kid. <laughs> So yeah, you. It's so funny. I'll always think of you as Dusty Parachute. I know. Yes. I get that a lot. I people, yeah, people are like, hey, Dusty. But no, I, <laughs> you know what? It was at a Mom Two conference, and it was Wendy Aaron's, and it was a session on branding or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I've been thinking about getting rid of that and just, you know, moving to, you know, SuzanneKearns.com or whatever. And she just leans into the table. She's like, Yes, do it now. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. so like as of that day, I was like, Okay, no more dusty parachute. So yeah, but you know, <laughs> back in the early days of blogging, we all named our blog something we thought was cute or yeah you know had to do with our our topic or whatever and then it didn't have mine didn't have my name in it for years yeah and that yeah, really the topic. whole branding thing my whole topic you. was yeah. um that the dusty parachute was the originally my blog was supposed to be like kind of a behind the scenes of someone after a career break mm -hmm. trying to get back into the workforce and just documenting what that looks like and the dusty parachute being what color is your parachute? Like, I don't even yeah. know because it's so dusty. It's so dusty. <laughs> it's so oh, dusty. Yeah. I get it. Yes. <laughs> so it, I know it takes that. The fact that it takes that much explanation is like, yeah, that wasn't a great name. But I did a few posts like going towards this idea that I was going to be, you know, looking for jobs and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I had a post go viral. And it opened up all these other doors for meeting amazing people like you and, you know, Jen Mann mm -hmm. and doing some, you know, writing for her and all kinds of stuff. So it, and then I just never went and got the job. So I'm still, I'm <laughs> You still, can still get the job. Yeah. No. And now we're doing the podcast to interview a bunch of career coaches about uh, women yeah. relaunching and doing their second act. So I just kind of, yeah. I like to find excuses to not do the work, but just uh, communicate about how other people could do the work. <laughs> I mean, maybe that is your thing. That's my you know? specialty, like, helping yeah. other people do the yeah. jobs that I don't want to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's got to be a place for that. Someone needs to. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Well, okay. So let's see. So we were talking about your 10 year ish break, and that's where we met. But it, again, it was not a break, it was a, it was a pause. It was a break. Pause. It was a blogging break. Yeah. Into, into this blogging world. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, and I was writing picture books and doing stuff like that from home. And then about my kids were, I think it, it was probably like 16 years old. I'm trying to think. It was probably about eight years ago, seven years ago. I don't even know because of the pandemic. I feel I like know. what do those years count as? Like, I Add, don't even know. Gone. What, Add two to yeah. everything. I, if you I think it was two years ago, it was four years ago. Yeah. Right. I, then it might be. Nine? No, eight years ago. I have no idea. Oh my god! I'm like it messed in a up time. time warp. Yes. Yeah. It messed up our sense of it's time. Completely. Seriously, it seriously messed up time completely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, 
I have no freaking clue. Um, anyway, my kids were teenagers. It's got to have been like seven or eight years ago. I'm just going with that. Yeah. And I realized they were old enough, and I, I, I knew that if I wanted to get back into the workforce, I needed to make make a bold move. I needed to, like, jump in. And so I just reached out to colleagues that I'd kept in touch with, mainly because I guess I was doing a lot of media stuff, and so I'd always stayed in touch with people for reviews and things like that, and held on to, which by the way, always hold on to your contacts because your friends from when you grow up in the industry become your best advocates. And I have, I have a really great group of women who I grew up with in the industry and they were like, you're coming back to, you know, you're, you want to come back into an office and offered me opportunities and let me get my foot back in the door. That's amazing. That is amazing. We talk a ton about values and in that time that you were on your pause doing some other things, did did your values change such that when you went back into your original field, were, did you look for something slightly different? Did you have a different feeling about what would be right for you? You know what? I went into the same exact thing hmm. because I really, I love what I do and it was always a great fit for me. Mm -hmm. Um and I felt like it was my, I felt like also, I mean, in terms of getting your feedback in, there was so much about it pre-kids that, or I had my oldest daughter, but I didn't have my twins while I was still working. I, I learned a lot. I mean, I wouldn't say that my values changed because I knew, I, no, you know what? I'm wrong. I'm glad I pulled over because that's a tougher question. I can't arrive and think at the same time. We saved the big ones for the last. But, um, yeah, you know what? It did. What changed is my my years of experience writing and doing. I mean, we weren't even called influencers. They called you know we were mom bloggers, which yep. I always can tell somebody doesn't know marketing when they refer to us as mom bloggers. Still, I'm like, yeah, you don't <laughs> That's know not what a you're thing talking anymore. about. <laughs> yeah, it's not a thing anymore. We you just you sound old. You just sound <laughs> old. So when I came back, I had I felt like I had a lot more to give. And I think that that's really, that's the key to kind of getting back into the workplace is being able to capitalize on what you've learned while you were out of the work world mm -hmm. and what you bring to the table. And having done in that time stand-up comedy and worked with so many bloggers and I just, all of that really brought a different perspective to my writing and to content. It gave me a view into digital, which people weren't even thinking about right. the mm -hmm. same way. And so I think it made me really valuable in those ways. Yeah. Um, and I brought a different perspective. And so I would say, yeah, I was a bigger and a better thinker when I came back into the workforce. I love that. I kind of got but butterflies. I, I did too. I got goosebumps. <laughs> oh. Because I tend to think about the time that I've spent away, which is a long time. Before we started this podcast, I tended to think of it kind of as a waste career-wise. And it's not. I learned a lot. I have changed so much. I know things I didn't know. And I have a lot of things to add and a lot to offer out in the world. Yeah. But I don't always think about it that way. And listening to you talk about what it brought to your career now is made a bunch of stuff come up. They're like good stuff. Yeah. And we don't, don't sell yourself short by any means. It is what we do as parents. Uh oh, <laughs> oh no. I see your boop in the phone again. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> so you're like, oh wait, we hear you. We hear you. It is such horrible form to not, and and makes me just feel so stupid that I'm like incapable of turning off a freaking alarm. <laughs> no, that's the beauty of editing the podcast. We are oh my fine. God. But no but no, I think both Missy and I agree that just this idea of again, the making your ellipses count and you know, it that can mean so many different things while you are on a career pause. I mean, the fact, just even doing this podcast, I mean, we've learned so many different skills that could be applied to other things. Having a blog, that's so many other different skills yeah. that, you know, even if you are not getting paid for something does not mean that you are not earning some skills and that it's not benefiting your future career in some way. So I think I've used a blog post totally as a right. writing sample applying for a job before. I mean, yeah. it was an unpaid piece of work and... 
it just showed them what I could do. I was keeping those muscles going while I was at home with little bitties. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it is, I, I think that we under, that we, well, first of all, before we did all of this, the, the area didn't exist. And it was a huge, I read a great article. It was in the New York Times. It must have been like years ago, but I was looking up. I don't even know what I was looking up. Something about, like, is it rude to call someone a mom blogger? Because I'm like, am I wrong? Because I, I called someone out on it, and I was like, you don't use that word. Don't. Yeah. And I was like, maybe it's it's so old that it's, like, chic again. Is it retro? I don't know. <laughs> and I'm like, bad. maybe I should shut up and look into it before I open my mouth. And mm-hmm. so uh, I found an article, and it talked about how, you know, we walked so that influencers today can run. And I'm like, <laughs> I like that. I do. Yeah, that's yeah. a really good point. I mean, we were part of that era where everything was, we were figuring it all out and starting to create. I never was an influencer, but we laid the groundwork so that influencers could be. Yeah, so they and could it, make their millions. And, yeah, we didn't, we didn't get paid and we didn't, you know, not, we, I think I still have a trash can I got from, from someone for free. But, <laughs> um, and... Yeah, I had a lot of things around my house that I got for free. But we yeah, didn't... like I was a laundry detergent ambassador. Oh, see, yeah. that's ambassador. Awesome. That's, yeah. like, that's awesome. I did do. I still do a lot of laundry. I mean, it did fit. But... <laughs> that is awesome. And see, all of that is huge. Being an ambassador for somebody, all of those skills, everything that we do every day, every time we're thinking or using our brain or pulling something together, those are all skills. Yep. Ah, oh, I love yeah. that. I love that. Okay, now we don't usually talk about kids and we don't usually talk about the parenting side, but while you are the local expert, both Missy and I just spent our spring break doing college tours. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. And I don't want to like bring back any PTSD because I know that you just (laughs) got done with this stuff. (laughs) Oh my God. Well, they're already, they're freshmen, but they have a lot of friends who are a year younger and waiting to hear where everyone's going and hearing like people are like, I've been rejected from everywhere. This, I'm having such bad PTSD. I'm, oh. oh God, is it insane? The process is crazy. Oh. Oh. It's a crazy process. Yeah. I, I don't know if I'm ready. Suzanne's one where year. Where are both of you at it? What's going on with it? Early, early. Side. I have a sophomore. So we're early days, like yeah. just trying to get a feel for what right. we're looking for. He thinks yeah. he knows exactly what he wants to do. So we're trying to find the right place. And Suzanne has a junior. So they're yeah, like, so in Zoe it. is a junior and we just oh did the full New York tour. We did like school of visual arts and NYU Pratt. And then we went up to RISD and you Brown. Went to Brown. Yeah. So we did RISD. My son you is have Brown. a kiddo at Brown. Yeah. Oh, your son's at Brown. Oh, smarty pants. He's very smart. He's mm. smart. They're both smart. They're all smart. Well, that's so the is thing. he enjoying All these Brown? Kids are so dang smart. I like, asked because it might be on our list. Brown. They're smarter than I am. <laughs> he loves it. He loves it. And his twin sister's at UCLA, and she loves it. And their older sister's graduating from Maryland in May. Oh my gosh! You got all all of it going on. Oh are my your gosh. twins missing each other? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. It's been it's been hard. I think it's been hard for them. They've never literally they've been separated in classes, but they've never right. been away from each other for this long. But they're doing okay. You know, I I think yeah. that it's it's hard. I think I don't know. Go ahead, ask me anything. I'll, I'll <laughs> I I if I can answer it, I will. But I feel for both of you. And by the way, Missy, is it your son or your it's daughter? My son. It's, it's son. my son. Yeah, your two boys. Son. It's not too young to be thinking about because you have to think about the classes that they have and what you're, yes. I mean, it's, it's so ridiculous. We started working with a college advisor when my kids were sophomores because we our school, yeah. we're in public school and they mm-hmm. have no capability to work with kids. None. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. We did, we're public school as well and did the same thing. We have an advisor and our spring break trip was so fruitful because up until then, he had really been like, oh, I just want to go to college. I don't really care where, I don't, whatever. I just want to go. And we saw two very different campuses. One was very urban and one was basically that town was the college. Mm-hmm. The urban one did not appeal to him. And that's so good to know because it it's is. an excellent school, but yeah. he might end up there and not be happy. And now we know we can kind of eliminate if the university is 
somewhat on the side of a freeway, it might not be the yeah. right fit for him. Uh, and it helped as mortifying as it was for him to walk around a college campus with his mom, dad, and younger brother. <laughs> he was able to then say, Oh, I see that. Like it feels different. Different schools have different feelings. And yeah. so yeah. it was really, really good for us. It kind of got that ball rolling and us thinking about what might, you know, he can, he can picture it, I guess. Yeah. Before that he is so it. amazing. You know, we do. We take for granted, I think, so many things that, you know, our kids, if they don't know, they don't know. Like, we don't yeah. we don't even think about it. We're like, how can you not know that they're not, they're different? They don't know. They just they don't, don't know. know. Yeah. Just for no. the record, a policeman just pulled up in front of me. I'm very curious to see if he's looking, going to be looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody called and was like, this lady's been outside the liquor store for yeah, 30 exactly. minutes. Exactly. And... <laughs> what is she doing out there? Right. And anything, she's talking I to herself. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> she's casing the joint. If and anything, she's crazy. I am a paragon of what you should do when you're doing a phone call, which is to pull over, right? Yes. Right? Exactly. Right. You're setting such a good example. Right. I'm definitely not going to rob the liquor store. Not happening. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't even know that I have any specific questions. I just, I just was like, ugh. I just like to know that someone survived it. So that's well. Good. And if you did two searches at the same time and ended up across the country, like you guys must have seen the gamut. We didn't. In fact, didn't. Ben never saw Brown before he went. Oh my God. Um, Livy didn't get her. She had two top choices. One was UCLA, but she was like, I'm not getting into UCLA. She's like, it's not happening. And so her other top choice was Lehigh, and then she got into both, and she'd never seen Lehigh. But when she got into UCLA, she so didn't expect it because we're in state, and it's yeah, we're like no one gets an in state. Like what what that what just happened? Like she just her excitement was so it was just so obvious. She was so excited about it, yeah. and you only get that excited when it's something you really you really, really want. And yeah. I, I think her biggest concern is it's in our, it, she felt like it was in our backyard, but no. we really try to leave her be like, I don't, she doesn't come home regularly. She's not popping in for meals. Like she can, if she wants, but we try and just let her pretend she's really far away. Right. <laughs> Well, I mean, and it's L.A. Like, everything is kind of far away. <laughs> Everything's really far if you think about it. <laughs> yeah. Like, on the other side of Texas. It's a road trip to get exactly. home, maybe. So. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, well, that's phenomenal. Exactly. Getting it. We really, Zoe loved Brown. I think that was one of her favorites. The nice thing about it, she's looking at RISD for the arts and stuff, because she's our, she's our resident artist. And they can take classes at Brown. That's, oh. Yes, they can. That's and right. Brown can take classes at RISD. So it's a really mm -hmm. amazing thing. So like, you know, RISD doesn't have French classes, but she could take her foreign language stuff at Brown or she could take liberal arts classes at Brown. So there, it's a really cool program that they have there that way. That um, but, cool. but I think she really kind of fell in love with New York. I think she solidified New York. Actually, you know what she fell in love with? Her, She has a coach too. And her coach is like, well, you know, between New York and RISD is Yale. Why don't you just pop in there? And so we're like, Oh, well, sure. Why not? Like, Why not just pop I know. And, but you know what? She was like, you know what? You've got the grades for it. You've got the skills for it. It's just one of those things of like, I've been listening to so many podcasts now. They're like, you know, there's so many kids with high SATs and, you know, over 4.0 GPAs that it, you just never know what they're going to look for. So it's like, you never right. know. You right. might have that one thing that they happen to be looking for for their student body that year. I mean, the, the numbers are crazy, but I mean... There's no reason she should be in it less than anybody else, except for right. just... If she's looking at Brown, there's no reason she shouldn't be looking at Yale. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. she fell. She really fell in love with it. But I think, you know, just, again, it's kind of a numbers game, especially, like you were saying, the kids yeah. for this year. The, the number of people who, like, held over from COVID and are now, oh. like, this big flood of... I think that's oh. going to probably go for the next few years. Uh -huh. The numbers are going to be even higher. And, you know, there's, that's and there's a lot of qualified smart kids out there, but there, I mean, I told yeah. her there's, again, there's no reason you shouldn't get in, but there's also, you know, like 10 times as many kids applying that also have no reason they shouldn't get in. So it really is. It's just, you never know. You never know. Right. You never know. But I do, I do think that kids end up where they're supposed to be. Yep. 
and where we'll be happy. Um, I mean, obviously there are exceptions to that. Sure. There, are, sure. I, I know a lot of kids who change schools too. But I think if you listen, if you can open yourself up as a kid and as a parent, because I and I think it's really we had to just sort of like walk away from the decision and let my kids were like you you figure out where you like we're not yep. going to push you yeah. one way or the other. If you can step back and take yourself out of the equation and take your ego out or whatever, or if you can, as a kid, take any kind of ego or take other people out of the equation, where do you think you can be happy? Mm -hmm. What has all the pieces? And if you can apply to schools with that in mind, you will end up where you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's great advice. Yeah. Because there are I, I a lot of schools. Is, like, there's a place there for are everything. Thousands mm. of amazing schools. And they all need and want great kids. Yeah. Yeah. And you just, it's, it's a lot of research. You don't get to see everywhere, but you no. do the online tours and you really think about what you want, what kind of professors you want. Like, you really have to mm. know. Like, you said you took your son, he was like, Wait, I don't, I don't want to be in this big school. Like, okay, good. So he knows yes. that. Yeah. Any information that allows you to say this is not the environment I want is so valuable. Yeah. I have a friend whose dad told her go sit in the student center and just watch people walk by and just see how it That's feels. And I thought advice. that was genius. Yeah. Genius. That is yeah. genius. Yeah, and she had her. I can't remember what school it is now, but she had her heart set on somewhere, and she went and sat there and thought, oh. This might not be right. And then she went and visited another school and realized, yeah, and this was, you know, many years yeah. ago when we were young. But I uh, know. And it's such a privilege to get to, it's such a privilege to get to like travel to go visit uh, some of these yes. schools. I know not everybody's in that boat, but I listen to like way too many podcasts about the college application process now. And people have suggested that even if you cannot, you know, go to New York or you can't go to LA to go right. check out these schools. Go to, if something's within like a, like we could go see University of Texas, A&M, whatever, things that are driving distance away that can at least kind of answer that question of like, do I want to be on a campus? Do I want to be something that, you know, that's more of within the city? Do I want mm -hmm. this? Do I want the big classes? Do I want, you know, the, yeah. so there, even yeah. if you can't tour the school, you can tour kind of like proxies for something those schools. Something that feels kind of like that. To yeah. be, just to get a feel for what that type of, you know, a big campus, little campus, all these types of things. So it is, uh, it's such good advice. It's such good advice. Because even if you can't get to Wisconsin, you can get to UT Austin, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So yeah, uh, get a feel for the size. Yeah, so you're going to, that'll be my, pretty much all my social media posts for the next two years. It's just me trying to like, take myself, I got her the coach so that I would take myself out of the process. Yep. So even though I'm out of her process, like I'm leaving her alone mostly, like I've basically set an hour aside on Sundays. I said, okay, so I don't drive you crazy for the next few years. I'm not going to bug you during the week, but on Sundays, you have to pay full attention to me for an hour because <laughs> I'm just going to unload my shit on you. And, and like every, I, mean, I think that's I've really fair with teenagers, week. period, because they yeah. do, like you said early on, like kids, everything in their being is getting them away from us now. Like they're yeah. asserting their independence. So I think it's really fair to say most of the week, I'm going to let you do your thing, but I need one hour. Yes. Because this is all new to me, too. I didn't research yeah. colleges when I went to college. I went to the college that my brother went to and that my best friend was going to. And I was like, I'll go there. And, like, we didn't tour. We didn't research. The, I told my daughter this, and she's mortified. My night before the ACTs was the first time I drank so much I threw up. Like, I did not take <laughs> this stuff seriously. I did not. <laughs> so, I don't think I knew that. That's oh really funny. God. No, I mean, so awesome. this is this is all so new to me. I'm like, SAT, bleh, it's fine. I did it hung over. But then I'm like, Oh no, <laughs> SATs, you got to actually, we need to get you a writing coach. We need to do this and this. So, I mean, it's, it's different now, but also I, I right. don't advise doing it the way I did it. Um, <laughs> but no, so it's new to me too. So I feel like even if I'm out of her business, I need to be in my business so that I, can be a semi-informed resource if she does come to me with a question or even to know 
be able to help her know what she doesn't know. Um, and right now we both don't know what we don't know. So I'm just, right. I'm right. letting her go with her coach and then I'm kind of self-coaching myself. So I have a clue what's going on over here. And oh my gosh, I'm driving. It's so crazy. all, it's crazy. All of it's crazy. My husband, thankfully, he's a writer, he's a great writer. And he worked with the kids on their essays and he's worked with a few people. And I was like, I, he, he to the point where he sort of, has opened up to the public an uh, essay, you know, if he if he's yeah. free and he's able to do it, he'll work with kids on their essays. And, and it was, thank God we had him because I would have, I would not have survived it. And so. you're a writer. And I'm a writer, but I don't want to work <laughs> with my kids on it. No, no. that's exactly <laughs> like I can write a killer essay, but uh, I don't want to help him with his essays. No, because no, I just yeah. think. We'll let the coach do that. And my friend Allison, yeah. I don't know if she meant it, but she's a literary agent. She's like, I'll help her with her essays. I was like, you better take that back in your mouth right now because I'm going to take you up on that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's so, it is It is a very complicated and difficult job to work with a kid to allow them to let their voice through and to allow mm -hmm. them to create something that, reflects yeah. them get them to that place to even talk so yeah. mm -hmm. oh, oh god you, you did it with twins though i know i did it with twins i don't know how i did it i don't know i don't know how we did it i don't know i honestly it's all just a blur it was everything's one day at a time one day at a time and when you do everything one day at a time you don't remember anything so. <laughs> well and you did it during a pandemic when so much other stuff was going on in your world and with your family and Oh my God! Uh, yeah, no I hope you've good given yourself are... a lot of space since well, then to kind yes. of breathe. You need it. I feel like the universe is like rewarding you for like yeah. you you did all the hard work, and then you knew when you needed a break, and then oh the universe is like, okay, now here it comes. Here it yeah. comes. <laughs> I don't know. From your mouth to God's ears, you know. Oh. It's hoping for the best just every day one day at a time one day yeah. at a time okay that's going to be our mantra this week or yeah. this this year <laughs> for the rest of my life like yeah. that's a great mantra. A Two, oh great there's there's somebody coming to my car and i'm hoping he does not show up at my window okay oh, no it's good oh, you although that would make some great content oh my god that <laughs> would be yeah, really amazing yeah, content we're not so much <laughs> we're not so much now you you have a friend uh, whose plane is arriving right now, yes. right? So we probably do, need to I let do. you go. I know you don't like to be late. Thank you for I talking to, to us from the car. Oh my God, it was so my pleasure. And we're just so appreciative that you were able to be flexible and work around with us. And yeah, when we are in LA, LA we will meet back up with you. And then we're going to have so to have you back on to talk about your new gig. Yes. Oh, I'm so excited about that. So Keep an eye out on Monday for an announcement. Right. I see, keep an eye out. Because everyone, everyone wants to know, what's Sarah doing next? Uh, yes, that we do. <laughs> I, I, it's a, the more appropriate response to me is, what did she do now? What, <laughs> what happened? What did I miss? I feel like that's the more appropriate. That's the response I get the most. <laughs> what did you do now? <laughs> what did she do now? I think that's a sign of a life well lived. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. Well, speaking of life well lived, you have fun with your friend. I know you haven't seen her Thank in you. ages and yeah, she's coming all the way across time. the country to hang out. So, yeah, have so much fun. Thank you. I'm so excited. And we'll excited. see you in a couple oh, weeks or two or three or you whatever that sweet. is. Yes. 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 I'm so excited. Yeah. We'll send you the information for when we're getting there. Yeah. Okay. Great. Wonderful. All right. Thank you all so right. much for having me. Both of you, thank you so much. This was so nice, and I'm so flattered you had me on. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, we are thank you. so happy you could be here and so excited yeah. to catch up after oh, it's been way too long. So, yes. Okay, now go drive safely. Turn yes. off right. your phone. Okay, without talking. I'll try. <laughs> Wouldn't the irony be if I get into an accident? I mean, it's got like, like, oh, my God, I'm knocking on wood again. No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you get going. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us for the Mom and Dot 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 podcast. We hope you enjoyed today's show. And if you know someone else who could benefit from the episode, please be sure and share it with them. And while we're begging, please subscribe and rate us wherever it is you listen to podcasts. 
You can find links to all the things we discussed today in our show notes or over at our website, momandpodcast.com with the A-N-D spelled out. In between shows, find us over at the socials, including our private mom and community Facebook group. The links to that group and all of our socials can be found at momandpodcast.com. Thank you so much for your support. We appreciate you more than you know. Now go out there and make your ellipses count.